Hello everyone, this is Sumerian, and in this tutorial we are going to talk about just about my favorite tool now in Disney Infinity, the all-powerful, all-wonderful Path Creator tool. Now this tool, uh, it's a little green nub, looks a lot like a locator, doesn't seem that impressive, but this thing can do all sorts of wonderful things. It actually can do so much that we have to do a few tutorials to cover it all. Uh, this one's going to be on the basics of using a path creator. So to start, I'm just going to show you how to use it. Little green nub, get it where you want. This is the start point of your path. Click place and your cursor will now change to these nice yellow dots. Uh, drag them around where you want them to go. And you notice as I turn and everything, the uh, the path behind will actually begin to curve and form itself into a path behind me. I'm just going to do a simple little path here. Uh, put a little bit of height into it. Drop that one. And then when you're done, you just hit the exit button. And you are done. Now to use the path creator for very basic things, um, we could actually use it right this second. Let's just see. We'll find ourselves a townsperson to drop. Uh, our friend Mighty Jitus. Let's just drop her on the ground here. And then when you select uh, a lot of objects now in 3.0, you'll find this new connection called New Path Connection. And townspeople have it, enemies have it, blocks have it, vehicles have it, all sorts of things have it. Even some set pieces have it. You just have to explore to see what you can hook up to the path. And all you do is make a connection to that toy box path, and Mighty Jitus is going to run over there, and she's going to start following our path. Now you'll notice the path is up in the air, but the Mighty Jitus Townsperson is walking along the ground following the path. Uh, that is a common trait for townspeople. You can't get them to float in the air or jump or anything like that with the path tool. They will simply follow it along on available terrain uh, to uh, just follow the path. Now you'll see every time she gets to the end, she's disappearing and reappearing here. That is a setting we can actually change. Uh, but for now, we're just going to get rid of her townsperson. And I'm going to show you... Uh, let's put a ground vehicle on here. I'm just going to put this simple blue car on here. And again, you select... You'll see new path connection and make a toy box path. Now you'll see this looks a little different. This ground vehicle is floating in the air along the spline and always pointing in one direction. And that just does not look very good. So we're actually going to show you a bunch of properties right now. Uh, we'll go over them all briefly. Uh, some of them will be explained better in further tutorials. Active on off, that just turns the spline on and off, which will stop the item on it. Uh, speed, this is what I call the base speed of a path creator. Uh, you can set it from any number from 1 to 300, and this is the speed that uh, the object attached to the path will travel along the entire path unless you change uh, the modifiers on either the object or the splines. And when I say that, um, I mean when you go to one of the splines, there's not many properties. Um, you'll see path checkpoint display default, and we'll go over those in, uh, in a, a racing type tutorial. But speed modifier percentage, and this again is any number from 1 to 300. And so let's say we set this path to a speed of 300, and I set this spline to a speed modifier of 50%. What will happen then is the object will start at the speed of 300, and by the time it reaches this spline, it will have slowed down 50% or to a speed of 150. If the rest of these splines are still set to 100%, then it will accelerate from 150 to 300 when it reaches this spline, and then it will continue along the rest of the splines at the speed of 300. That's the simple of it. You'll see also on vehicles, there's new properties that pop up when you attach any object to the toy box path, and you go into the object itself to find them. This speed here as well 
is also a percentage. Uh, you can adjust the speed of each individual item to a percentage that it will travel of the speed of the base path. Now, you see there's actually a whole bunch of properties, and we'll get into them later on. Uh, the one we're going to look at right now is Orient Along Path. And now that I've turned it on, let's look and we'll see this vehicle come. And now it's no longer always pointing one direction. It's actually pointing in the direction of the path that travels along. Now that is what we would use for most items to make sure that they follow the path in a proper manner. But since this is a ground vehicle, it has an extra option down here called Use Driving Physics. And what that does is it applies gravity and it also uh, makes the vehicle drive itself along this path. Uh, and you'll notice what that means is if there's a tight turn, the vehicle won't just follow the path. It'll make a turn, it's allowed to turn, in order to try and keep up with that path. Um, so, I'm going to turn them both on so it stops doing that at the very beginning. And so here we'll see that the vehicle is now traveling, orienting itself along the path, and driving along it as it goes. Pretty simple right there. Now, let's just get rid of this vehicle. And we're going to go back into the properties here and go through them all quickly. So we already did speed. Looped simply means that the last spline on your path is going to connect itself to the starting spline to make the entire path a loop. And you'll see how that affects everything right there. Rail slide. Turn this on, and players can jump on this spline and you or on this path and use it as a rail slide. Auto start object connected. As you saw before, when I hooked up the townsperson and the vehicle, they both automatically started. Uh, if I turn this off, then they won't start automatically. I'll actually have to send a signal to the path creator to tell it to start. A visual effect on path that is, and visual effect on checkpoint path. These are both effects you can put that will travel along the entire spline to show where it is. Uh, you'll notice I keep saying spline or path. It's, we've been calling these things splines as well, so it all points to the same thing. So you see that green fire is traveling along the path all the way around, and it keeps going. That's all the visual effect does. So let's turn that visual effect off. And 2D character movement, that is for platforming type games. Uh, default path checkpoint display, that is for racing or course or lap type things. And path point options, this is the option available on all the path points, the yellow ones and the green one, where you can modify the speed or the type of effect being displayed on it during a course or a race, which of course we'll go over later. So. For now, I'm going to put a new Naboo Starfighter down. I'm going to hook it up to this guy, toy box path, and you'll see now that I have turned off the auto start, it didn't move automatically when I created that path. So now I'll show you some of the basic inputs and outputs. So you can turn it on and off, which is active. Uh, if you turn it off, all items traveling on it will stop and drop. If you turn it on, all objects near it should start going again. You can send a reset and stop, which will um, move the object to its reset point, which is something we'll get into later, and just stop it and keep it there. Uh, you can hit reset and play, which will move it to its reset point and then play everything on that uh, path. Start and stop checkpoint path tracking, that's for a race type deal. Connect triggering actor to path is where you can force something to actually be attached to that path. 2D character movement is platforming, and Restore 3D just simply turns off the 2D character movement. So for now, we're just going to reset and play. Now the outputs. The outputs, there's a whole lot of them off the main path creator. Uh, these are basically when it's received the input signal to start doing these things. 
And then at the end, these three are available to all points on the path. Point reach by object on path is how you trigger events when something flies through the path. That's the main one we're going to use. We're actually going to use it right now. And we're going to drop one of our fun new fireworks cannons. We're going to place it right there. And we're going to tell this point right here. When an object crosses your path, we want a large Disney Infinity logo, of course in red. And let's see what happens now. I push this button, that ship should just go to the start point of the spine and start to follow it around. Of course, I did not tell it to orient along the path, so it's going to look a little fugly right now, but we can fix that in a second. Infinity, nice. And here, orient along path, and you saw the speed it was going, so I'm actually going to modify the speed that the vehicle is traveling along this path to 300%, just to show you how that ship is going to suddenly speed up. And there we go, that is the Path Creator tool, the basics on how to use it. There will be more tutorials on it because it can be used for a whole variety of things, and it's very simple to start to use, it's very difficult to master, it can get very as complicated as you want. So, again, this has been Sumerian, and I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. Have a great day.